Hi, I'm John Messer, the Leadership Development and Systems Catalyst for the Luminex Group. We're in a series on the church needs heroes. Um, and today we're going to wrap up this series on uh, heroes in the church by talking about optimism as the fourth prescription for hero leaders and hero disciples in the church. Uh, now remember, our context here is that we are in the perfect storm of VUCA, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity as the leadership context and have been for decades now. But on top of that has been laid the uh, COVID layer which has just compounded everything. And so ambiguity is more ambiguous. Complexity is more complex. Uncertainty is more uncertain. And so leadership has become very, very difficult in the church. And we're seeing the results. People are burning out. Leaders are resigning in droves. And we want to talk about how we can counter that. What's the antidote to the perfect storm? What's the solution? And we're saying that the solution is focus on being hero leaders, hero disciples. Hopeful, empowered, resilient, optimistic. Optimism is really about how we define reality. And remember that defining reality in the midst of this storm is even that more important. And we want to be optimistic about how we define reality. Be real, but optimistic. Very often, optimism is misunderstood as uh, just positive thinking. Positive thinking is not optimism. Uh, positive thinking can be a component, but positive thinking in itself is usually without a basis. It's just, I'll think positively about everything, whether there's a basis to do that or not. And so optimism has a basis. Optimism is not baseless. The basis of optimism is, of course, God and his work, the Holy Spirit and what Christ has done for us. That's the basis of our optimism. So we are optimistic with reason. And that means that we expect to experience positive and desirable things in the future rather than uh, always expecting the worst, thinking, well, it's downhill and it's only going to be worse. We don't take the Eeyore approach. Well, I suppose it's, I don't know, make it going to get worse. We are not Eeyores in the church. We are Christ followers and we are optimists. That includes the components of hope and faith. As we said, all of these things are interrelated. We can be optimistic because we have hope and we are empowered in a sense by the faith that we have in Jesus Christ. And we trust that when God says things are going to be better, they will be better. Even if we don't see that yet, we're optimistic about the future. So we put, we put hardship and struggle. We even put uh, VUCA and COVID in context. And that context is that it's external and it's temporary. This will not last forever. Now, there are people who, who call you silly if you do that, but it's true. If God is in control and we're optimistic because of God's work, Christ's work, the Spirit's work, we can honestly say that this won't last forever like this, that there will be good and desirable things in the future. And so, we are putting hardship, we're putting failure, we're putting struggle, we're putting challenges in the context of we will work our way through this and we'll be better on the other side. That's optimism. Pessimists, on the other hand, do the exact opposite. Rather than seeing challenges as temporary and external, they see challenges and hardship and failure and struggle as internal and pervasive. So something that went wrong, a failure, becomes uh, internalized and pervasive. Failure in one thing means failure in everything. Uh, struggle in one area means struggle in every area. And by the way, that is epidemic in some churches. And I believe that that comes from the top. Leaders tend to uh, define the culture, whether it's pessimistic or optimistic whether it's empowered or powerless, whether it's hopeful or hopeless. That's why this is so important. If we want to be able to, to reach our culture, if we want to be the church in the midst of a new culture as it, is, as it is growing and being defined, we need to be optimistic about the future. Optimists explain not only the future, but we also tend to use our uh, temporary external explanatory style in the past and the present. So these things will not last forever. That there is something better coming. Even if it's, even if it's only that final day where the good comes, something better is coming. 
but we have, uh, we have the optimistic hope that that's the case. And more than anything, optimism is necessary to be the antidote to the, to the pervasive pessimism and cynicism that exists in our culture these days. People are going to be attracted and need to hear optimists in the midst of such pessimistic cynicism. So why be optimistic? Why take the risk of having someone say that you're wearing rose-colored glasses? Why? Because God is faithful. God is faithful. And with God, all things are possible. Be a hero leader for your church. Be a hero leader for your neighbors, for your community. I believe that's what God has called us to be, what, it's called us, what he has called us to do in the church for the sake of others. I'm John Messer for the Luminex Group.